Welcome to Still Plays Galaxy of Heroes. We're going to be getting Red Crate in this conquest. I do not have good resistance or first order, so that's what I want to talk about. We got the Red Crate like Thursday night. I was going to make this a small talk, but it really couldn't make it short enough, so we're going to try something new. This is viable for the time being. This, I think this will be the umbrella category for the gear assessments and if I take a closer look at squads or anything else. I have some other plans, but that's all subject to change. This video, I want to touch on the approach and philosophy of my roster and the channel and how that fed into me being able to get Red Crate in this conquest and all conquests up to this point. We've hit Red Crate every time and the way I manage my roster has made that possible. Look at the status of each of those factions, the feats that I worked on, and more specifically, which feats I skipped, and which squads I was specifically using in a little bit more detailed than the faction look, and then the data disks that we worked with this conquest. It might be late for this conquest, but hopefully this information will help those of you who are close red crate in the next two. If you are a longtime viewer, I advise just skipping ahead. I want to briefly introduce my playstyle to any potential new viewers to the channel who might be interested in this video uh, because of the topic. Because one of the points of this video is to be a counterweight to some aspects of the echo chamber that I see when it comes to the Swaga community. I'm a free-to-play player. I don't have that many relics for my Grand Arena division. Right now I'm vacillating between Kyber 2 and Kyber 3. I only have two GLs. I'm getting ready to create this conquest without having SOKR or Ray. And I credit that to how I manage my roster. I build wide, not up, and the common advice to focus on one squad and build it up, I argue is antiquated for today's game. I see a lot of players at my level with level one gear one characters and it doesn't make sense for late game players anymore because what CG has done is create a lot of game modes that reward broad rosters and the way I play of emphasizing that gear 11 is about getting a broad roster quickly for a lesser investment. What I'm about here, what my approach can be summed up as is doing more with less. We have a bunch of videos on it and there will be even more in the future, but it comes down to understanding what relics matter and why and how the game is biased towards newer characters. So what I try to do is find ways to beat CG. We build strategies for high free to play performance. Most players have their GP in relics. My GP is in the breadth of my roster and it's not affecting my performance and my participation in Grand Arena or other game modes, it's helping. My roster is broad and not top heavy. I have a limited amount of Relic 6 characters and higher because I'm stingy when it comes to those resources. Instead, what I have is a lot of Gear 11 characters and specifically what that means is I have nearly every single character at Gear 11, which means I can shift with CG regardless of where they move the target. I can adapt quickly. So. When CG throws a surprise conquest like they did with this one with Resistance and First Order, even though I don't have those factions developed for a Galactic Legend, I'm still able to participate because I've already built them up to that Gear 11 floor. What you see on screen is about what left I have to work on because of how I'm able to rapidly develop up these characters by focusing on this. Obviously, this is something you augment. It's not a strict rule. You add relics where it helps and is sensible. People have been predicting my demise for a long time, but we keep surviving in some part because this game rewards broad rosters. Having more squads means having more resources and faster development because you can compete and participate in nearly every game mode. And whenever CG adds more defensive requirements, we're able to absorb those changes more easily. It allows us to be a more flexible type of player. If we're going to show the squads faction by faction and their status and then we'll move on to feats where I'll show the specific squads and in some cases nodes where I used to accomplish those feats. If you've watched the free to play gearing portions of my talk videos you've seen that since the inception of Galactic Legends, I've been working on all of their requirements to Gear 11 so that I would have the flexibility to move in any direction. 
My list video on solo characters or my methods video on relics is the thought process behind Kylo. That's just a very valuable, very powerful relic that any player should be having. And that was enough to accomplish a number of the feats. Not the Sector 5 kills feat with First Order, but this is enough for this faction. With the Resistance, we have a little bit more because I have JML and JMK. We have R2, C3PO, and JTR at Relics. But I didn't just rely on those characters. I was using the Resistance Heroes and Finn a lot. And those are characters that are somewhat regularly left ignored because they're fairly expensive to work on. But those are the types of characters that are really good, really valuable, that when you're willing to exchange relics for having characters, you get a little bit more options. I was able to grind out a lot of the resistance feats in Sector 1 with those guys. With the droids, there's a lot of different options. I did use IG-88 some, I did use R2 and C-3PO and Chupio some, but I also used a lot of T3M4, Sortie, BB-8, just depending on where stamina levels were. I moved around my options in order to be able to maximize my number of attempts. But you should make sure you have Sortie. Don't leave Sortie undeveloped just because it's a newer character, it's a single shard farm. That is a very valuable character at any star level and any gear level just because of how the mechanics work. The Inquisitors are at gear 12 now, but for the bulk of this conquest they were at gear 11. I just took them up for a grand arena. I've got footage that I'll show where they were functioning at the gear 11 levels. Very expensive squad to gear up. And this is where that exchange comes into play that I'm talking about, where I'm willing to have fewer relics if it means I have access to newer characters. A lot of players don't think that's a worthy exchange. But for me, it meant extra feats, which means I'm going to have Ben Solo. Maybe that's going to pay off or not, but I'm in control of that decision, not CG and other requirements. With the feats, there's not a lot of flexibility here. With the global feats, there is a diet in the force where you need to have SLKR or Ray. So that one is a default one you're going to miss. There is another boss feat in Sector 4. I'm not going to click on this one right now because it's a waste of time. That boss feat, you need SOKR. That's another one that you're going to miss, which means there's one more feat that I didn't get that technically might be possible given the right nodes, which is here in Sector 5 that I opted to just not do, which is this First Order feat to defeat 50 enemies. Technically, I could probably find a node to do it, but it would probably take an outrageous amount of attempts, so I just didn't even bother, because I was able to just get by the minimum threshold on those banners. I think it was two extra banners that I had. I just got it. There's a lot of great channels with approaches to the other feats and quick ways to accomplish them. We're not going to recreate their good work. Check out channels like Bit Dynasty for breakdowns on those, or I can answer them in the comments. What I want to emphasize here are the factions and gear levels I use to focus on the defeat enemy counts or win with a squad X number of times and what factions I use for them. Because in a lot of cases, those other channels were accomplishing those feats with relics. Now, Sector 1 is where I accomplished the majority of the global feats. It's where I just grinded out those first order and resistance battles. You can do it on the mini boss node. This is fairly easy, but it is a little bit riskier. What I ended up doing was getting a Phoenix node and just grinding them out here. So that is an RNG component in the future where I'm going to go out of my ways to make sure I am getting a Phoenix node in my playthrough because that was very important for both the First Order and Resistance, but particularly the First Order. With Sector 1, the defeat enemy feat is with droids. That's going to be either your Separatist droids or you can be using Sortie. I use Sortie. Sortie is very good and is going to make that very quick, but we'll talk more about that in Sector 4. So I used these two teams to grind out the First Order and Resistance global feats. So there's one relic 
on both teams. I tried out first order with Sith Trooper instead of Fox, but he kept stealing kills from Kylo, so actually making it a little bit weaker made it easier to get those wins with Kylo Ren. With the Resistance, sometimes I would swap in C-3PO or R2 depending on where stamina levels were, but it just depended on at which stage of conquest I was in and how many other different feats I was working on simultaneously. The Kylo Ren Vet Han, this one is just hide them behind a GL and try and get lucky I, and do it against a team with fewer AoEs and if you can, augment it a little bit with some consumables. With Sector 2, the easiest place is going to be the boss node here with Poe. That is both with the defeat 50 enemies with the resistance or with the Inquisitors. These characters are pretty weak, so the Inquisitors are going to be able to survive their pretty long time. And it's also, if there's a Kenobi node, those are going to be a great place for it. But there's a, a number of good ways to cheese that feat as well. And at the beginning of Sector 2, I got lucky with a Kenobi lead node. Kenobi is good because with any of the Inquisitors, they're just going to have an easier time of applying Purge against Jedi. There's just a little bit more risk that a character like Yoda could start quickly taking out those non-relic Inquisitor characters. But this is easily accomplished with Gear 11 Inquisitors. In Sector 3, the defeat 50 enemies within Inquisitors. I had the easiest time on the mini boss mode. These characters are weak, not much of a threat. You'll be able to get through it. It's just grindy. Just do two in the morning, two in the evening. You'll make the progress to get there after a few days. Now, Sector 4 is where I spent the majority of my time, and the best place to grind out feats is actually up against Ben Solo here in the mini boss node. The other characters are fairly weak. You just go after JTR, take her out first, and then the rest of the characters will fall apart from there. And that is for both the win 14 battles with non-separatist droids and win 14 battles with a full squad of Inquisitorious. With data discs, I did have some good RNG but there are some alternate options where if I don't get as lucky next time or if you're not as lucky, this will still be replicable to one degree or another. So the four dot mods, that's where it's, there's more RNG than anywhere else. Booming Voice is one of the ones I got. Another one that is similar is Dark Loyalty. That's just dark side specific. But the big idea here is that they're increasing the attacks out of turn. But there is a three dot mod that will do this called Perseverance. So if you don't get a 4.1, grab Perseverance. I'm definitely grabbing it, even if it's a gray one next time around. And it's because of how they synergize with Blindside. Blindside is going to be adding exposes whenever someone attacks out of turn. So this way you're not relying on teams or characters that are creating attacks out of turn. Any leader is going to be able to do it. This is how I was able to really boost the defeat enemies on Kylo, or make my life a bunch easier with those first order droid or resistant feats that I was going after. Some of these other ones I didn't get until until sector five. So like I had I was dealing with gray amplify agonies until sector five. A lot of this stuff happened near the end of conquest. But also feats uh, data discs like Ze zealous ambition help a little bit, but I ended up taking that off in order to give myself some other options. It depended on which squad I was using. It's very good for like the resistance where there's a number, like those droids, they have a lot of healers and support characters, but it didn't help as other squads like First Order as much, so depending on which one I was using, I was swapping them on and off. And I wouldn't always do it, but consumables, Especially with Inquisitors and in Sector 4, what the consumables would do was allow me to win with a 90% stamina squad, or in some cases an 80% stamina squad, so I was able to get in an extra battle a day. And really it's either the health med packs or the protection med packs that I was really relying on, sometimes the speed boost or an offensive boost, and 
I grabbed a couple frenzy techs. I didn't. I ended up not even using them, but these can be really nice for the Inquisitor feats. I used these a lot during the Melgus conquests with the Inquisitors, so that's why I grabbed them. But I ended up not even using them this time. The other one I like is the Mending Shield tech, where when or there's there's other versions where they're attacked, they'll get a little protection up. I think it's some version like that. Of the data discs that we were given by various feats and tasks, Deadly Catalyst was the one that I liked the most. Force Dyad was kind of a waste. There is one thing I want to highlight about Force Dyad that I am worried about in the subsequent conquests. You could win or accomplish the feat in a victory or a loss, and you didn't have to use a resistance squad it doesn't specify that you need to use a resistance squad. You just had to have it equipped. This one thing that hopefully CG doesn't alter. So that, because that would make things significantly harder. Last thing is in terms of crystals. I spent more crystals in this conquest than I have in all previous conquests. It was the 350s a day and I would do one or two of the 100 crystal refreshes. I did finish a little early, so there is room to be more efficient. I probably only need to do one of those 100 crystal refreshes, but I wanted to make sure I made a lot of progress earlier in Conquest to just in case things took a little bit longer. So I did spend a decent amount. I was at 20k in crystals at the beginning of Conquest. I was doing a bunch of other things, but Part of the reason why I had the crystal drain I did was definitely because of the amount of refreshes that I was doing here. If you have questions on any specific feat, throw it down in the comments and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you for watching. Be safe out there everyone and be excellent to each other. This is Still Plays Galaxy of Heroes.